Warning, although this podcast revolves around Disney, Disney movies, and Disney-related themes, we have a tendency to use mature language, which is not suitable for all ages. Discretion is advised. It has been a hot minute, but the Ocho and Ortiz Disney podcast is back in your life. And on this episode, we're doing something that we've been trying to do for the last year. And we're finally getting around to it. So without further ado, let's get this thing started. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Ocho and Ortiz Disney podcast is back in your life. And I am not even going to shout out the social medias and and the links to where to find us right now, because it has been so long since we've done an episode that I honestly cannot remember. Uh, I think our Twitter is at Ocho Ortiz Disney pod, or maybe it's at Ocho and Ortiz Disney. I don't know. Check the description box down below. It's going to have the links for all of our social medias, where you can go to buy merch, where you can go to listen to the show to help support the show. It has been, like I said at the top, a a hot minute. It has been two years since, almost two years, since our last episode. Our last episode was Halloween Town Review, which we released on Halloween Day of 2021. So it is. it has been a while. I mean, to be fair, that episode could have been a mic drop episode for if we never did an episode again, because I just went off on how much I hate it. Halloween Town. That it was such an ep- I had a couple of epic rants on that episode that it, it would have been a perfect mic drop episode. That's fucking amazing. That was we the also, last episode. That's that, great. That was our last episode. It was Halloween Town. Plus, the first 20 minutes of that episode was an interview that I did with Timmy Britt where he was sharing his real-life ghost stories. And, Timmy, if you're listening to this, we hope you're doing well, my friend. Haven't seen you on Instagram in quite a while. And when I went to the Timmy Britt art website, it doesn't look like it's any it it doesn't look like his, it's his website any longer it looks like it's an art studio website he is still listed on there and there's still information on there to book timmy for for speeches and doing podcasts and stuff so i i hope t- i hope timmy's doing well it looks like he's doing well if he's got his own art studio now but we we love timmy we always enjoyed having timmy on the show so Timmy, if you're listening to this, we hope you're doing well. We love you. But yeah, Josh, this is an episode that we've been planning on doing for a year. Obviously, we've been on hiatus for two. But exactly. You know what it is? It's Halloween Town 2. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you can get the fuck out of here with that shit. It is, it is our Disney World trip report. We are breaking this down into two episodes because we've actually been to Disney World twice in in the past year. So we went in September of 2022, and then we went again this past January. So we're gonna. This first episode is gonna focus on our September trip, and then the second episode is going to focus on the January trip. But I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Josh start it off because I know he took notes and stuff of what we did for that September trip. Everything in my mind is kind of blurred together at this point, so I'm gonna let Josh take over from here, and I'm just gonna sort of uh, input when I when I feel like it. <laughs> I took notes. Well, you you kept track of the rides and everything that we did, and I think oh, you kept track of where we eat where we ate. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> 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 you you had the notes in your phone when we were down there in September because <laughs> you were showing me all the things that you wanted, all the rides and stuff that you want to take me on. And then you were like checking them off as we did them. <laughs> oh, I think I reset that when we went in January. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I want to say we did. <laughs> I, okay, you know what the best part is? It doesn't really matter because I'll just throw out a fucking ride and ask you if you went on it or not. Yeah, that works for me. That okay. works for me. 
We can do that. We can do that. We can do that. That works. Because I, I still, I'm. Although I can do the Halloween Horror Nights, that's for sure. That one I can do for sure because that hasn't switched since. Dave, how did you like Halloween Horror Nights? I mean, it's okay. I'm not a big Halloween guy. It's okay. But I fucked right on out of there as soon as I got my first opportunity to do so. Thanks. Thank you, Shabby, for uh, actually coming to Halloween Horror, t- Horror Nights so uh, so I could get the fuck out of there because I did not want to do that at all. My, my favorite thing about that was when she showed up and she was like, so Dave, one more haunted house? And you're like, fuck no. <laughs> So Dave, when's that Uber coming? <laughs> and I think, I think at one, I, I think she kept trying to convince me to stay, and I was just like, absolutely the fuck not. <laughs> yep. yep, that's exactly what word for word is what you. That's exactly what you said. Oh man, that was a funny time. That I was mean, an interesting time. I'm not knocking Halloween Horror Nights at all. They do a really good job. Like they go all out, at, and I mean. To be fair, this is Universal Studios, not Disney, so we're getting a little sidetracked. But they, Universal really goes all fucking out for for Halloween Horror Nights. But Halloween is just not my thing; never has been my thing. So when uh, when Shabby decided that she was she was going to join and, and do Halloween Horror Nights, I was like, "Yep, nope, fuck no. You guys do Halloween Horror Nights." I'll do the other the other park of Universal Studios, Islands of uh, of Adventure. I will yeah. fuck on off over there, and I will do the rides over there. You guys can stick to Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah, that's amazing. I love Halloween Horror Nights. I'm going there soon. Yes, I know you are, and this you'll have another trip start. report when you come back. <laughs> I will, and this year is going to be Stranger Things, and I'm excited. <laughs> okay, let's do. So we're doing Disney. Yes. We need to talk. Well, maybe we need to do a separate one of our Universal trip as well. I know it's a Disney podcast, but we just got to do a trip report about Universal at some point. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, but let's do Disney now. Here's the thing: is that here's one of the the most important things that I remember. Not most important things, but one of the things that I definitely remember from that trip was our very first day in our very first park and your very first ride. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. <laughs> so, Dave, how did you like Guardians of the Galaxy? Every time I think about it, I still feel like I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I think I missed the majority of that ride because I had my eyes closed. It was the first ride of the morning. We had just eaten breakfast, and I was not expecting that ride to be as fast or as spinny as it was. And I was not prepared to handle that so soon in the morning. So, yeah. I had my eyes closed. I was trying to to keep my breakfast inside of me, which thankfully I did. I didn't end up throwing up at all. So that's that's always a that's always a positive. Yeah. But yeah, no, I I mean, the the music was awesome. I, I can't really comment too much on the rest of the ride because, as I said, my eyes were closed. So don't really know what was going on. <laughs> that ride is it was at the time when we went last year it's almost it's gonna it's coming up on a year it was brand new i mean it's still right now only only utilizes the the lightning lane or the virtual queue so you can't just walk on and try and get it and try and get in there you actually have to get the virtual queue at either seven or one o'clock or like i said pay for the individual one and it was brand new when we first when when we went and it was my first time going on the ride i might have done it like the day before or two days before when you were when you weren't there because uh, I really wanted to try it. Yeah, and I loved it because uh, I I had gone down to Florida a couple of days before, but I was I was in Tampa to go to the Tampa Bay Rays game, and then you did an extra day of Disney without me before before I got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I'm pretty sure I went to Epcot because it's I love food and wine festival <laughs> and we'll be talking about that as well. I'm, I'm so mad I'm not going to that this year. <sighs> I am uh, I've got my list ready. It's going to be great. <laughs> but it was I decided to go on that ride and I fucking loved it. It's definitely my favorite ride at Epcot. Maybe my second or third favorite ride at Disney World in general. It's I loved it. I I've never had the same music twice. I've been on it about four or five times, I think, and I've never had the same music. It's always something different. I think there's only about five tracks, but it's 
they they play a song and it just it goes fast, it goes backwards, it goes forwards, it goes, it like you said, it spins. Yeah, there's a whole story towards it too, which is really awesome, and it's just it's it's a fantastic brand new ride. I was a little skeptical about it when I saw like what it was gonna look like. I'm like ah, but then when I actually went on, I'm like holy fuck, this is amazing. And I feel like after taking you on that ride, I find I I comprehended and realized what your comfort level is <laughs> or tolerance for rides. So I was I feel like I was very uh knowing what you could or could not go on after that ride. Cuz I mean, I I I'll do most rides. I will do most rides, but yeah, I'm not good with like roller coasters on things that spin really fast. Like I mean, I know I know Rise of the Resistance, it, there's a lot of spinning in that, but it's not as fast moving as as guardians at least not in my opinion but yeah so i mean i did it i tried it would i try would i try it again with my eyes open i would i would probably attempt it one more time but yeah yeah, it it just i was not prepared for that especially with it being the first ride that i went on so (laughs) that's fair that's fair so from what i remember and so like i said like i said i re did the the list or i updated that list when we went in january but from what i remember we hit every ride except for remy when we went in september because that was the one ride you were determined to go on when we went on in january yes because the the lineups for in september were just so even when we did go back in january the lines were so so long for that ride that we just did not end up getting a chance to do it in in september but yeah i think I think you're right. Everything else at Epcot, we we pretty pretty much went on. So I, I have uh, them all here, and we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you about it, and if you went on it or not. There, I don't think you went on Test Track, did you? We went. We did Test Track, yeah. You did Test Track, okay. I did Test Track. I think, I think that was like I can't remember what we did between Test Track and Guardians, but I'm pretty sure like Test Track was the third ride that we went on. I feel like saying Figment because I knew you would like Figment. Like, but the the thing with test track is we ended up being in different cars, so that's oh right. That's probably why you don't remember me being doing it because you ended up getting in a car in uh, ahead of me, and then I ended up getting in a car with some woman and her daughter. So we were in different cars for test track because you know what it was is because it was probably about like an hour and a half wait. And we decided to go on the single rider line and got it in like ten minutes. That's right. the that's the beauty the beauty the beauty of test track is there's a there's a there's like three or four rides in general at disney that have single rider lines test track being one of them because it's a three-seater it's easier for them to get on to get like singles on there right yeah so i think that's definitely what happened we did it as uh we did it as single riders and we ended up in separate cars so that's why you don't remember me being on test track but yeah no i i I definitely did test track it was okay it was again it's another really fast ride but I, I, I handled it better than I handled Guardians. It's because that and, one doesn't spin. And, but the thing, with, the thing with Test Track, because it is outdoors on a track, obviously, when it rains, which it rains a lot in Florida. <laughs> Especially so, September. Yeah. So that ride was almost always shut down during our time there. I was shocked that we actually managed to go on it even once during our time there because i think the rest of the time when we tried to go back it was it was shut down because of the rain (laughs) that's fair i love that ride though it's one of my favorite fucking rides but the the thing is with the single rider ride line you don't get to do all the interactive stuff that you would in the normal line and do like the build your own car type thing that I've seen them talk about on like Disney blogs on YouTube. So we didn't get to do any of that because we were in the single rider line. And that looks like it would be something awesome to do, like just design your own car as you're waiting in line. But yeah, so I would definitely like to to wait in the regular line at some point just just so I can build my own car because that seems awesome. But uh, yeah, other than that, test track I, I i enjoyed but it was another one that was that was a really fast ride and i wouldn't recommend doing early in the day or after you have just eaten definitely definitely do it somewhere in between fair enough all right then the next ride i have listed over here is i 
I know we went on this and we definitely did the green version instead of the orange version and it's Mission Space. I love Mission Mission Space. That's when I ended up going back on like two or three times in January. I I really def- I, I, I definitely would not do the orange version because obviously the orange version is the more intense version where it shakes you up like you're an actual astronaut in their actual training. So I was advised not to do that one if I couldn't handle Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, so, I definitely I told you I'm like, yeah, we're not you're I'm not taking you on the orange one. That's definitely not happening. Yeah, and and in all the Disney blogs that I've watched on YouTube since they've said the same thing. Like if you can't handle handle like motion rides, like intense motion rides, do the green version. So yeah, we did we did the green version, which is a lot less intense. It's just like you're flying through space at uh, at a leisurely rate. I, I really enjoyed enjoyed that one. But yeah, like I said, in, in when we were back in January, I did that one like two or three more times. I, I really enjoyed Mission Space. Yeah, Mission Space is, it's fun. I like it. I mean, I've always liked it. That was my very first time ever trying the green one with you, which is the less intense. I've always, always ever done the orange, more intense <laughs> one. I'm just, I... I I don't get motion sickness or anything like that. So I've always done the more, more intense shit. And uh, I love that ride. It's fun. It's a little outdated, but it's still fun. And uh, the one we went on, it's, I think we're just going around the moon. No, we don't even leave the orbit. We don't even leave orbit, I don't think. I think we're, I think in the green one, you're supposed to be low or low Earth orbit. So you still see Earth. You, the idea is you still see Earth from space and stuff, but you're not there as long as you would be in the orange one. Just because it's obviously it's not uh, not as intense. Yeah, the orange one is a is the mission to I think it's Mars, and what yes. you do is you're um you actually have to use the you have to use the uh the gravity of like the moon and it slings slingshots you to closer to Mars if I'm right and it's it, it's a fun ride it it that one's more of a simulator it. Uh, you have to push buttons, but you also it it moves. If you're in the more intense one, it spins you around fast, which is definitely something not for Dave. <laughs> um, but it's it's really fun. I it's it's a great ride there. I love that one. I will I will hear the full playback of what you just said when I edit this because <laughs> I I accidentally just knocked out the the wire to my headphones and I completely missed out on what you said. But it looks like you're it looks like you still picked up on the recording voice wise i just well, that's good <laughs> so I'll, I'll i'll play when i'm editing this i'll play back and hear what you said but yeah just to summarize the orange the orange side of mission space is the much more intense one and and mission to mars but yeah no i i like the green version i thought about trying the orange version when when i was when we were back there in january and we'll get into part two more into the january trip but in january I I spent a lot more time alone at the parks because you were there with uh, with your cousin and your sister. So I I spent a lot more time on my own doing doing things that I wanted to do. Seeing as how you know the first time you were there with me and you really sort of gave me a feel for the things that I knew I would enjoy and, and what how the parks operate and stuff. So I was much more confident when we went there in january to to be able to do stuff on my own so we'll get more into that in part two but as i said when when we did go back in january i was tempted to try the orange i got very very close i was in line and then i was like no i just i don't think i i I don't think i can handle this so i just ended up stepping out of line and going back and doing the uh to to doing the green side again that's fair that's fair all right, so um, our next ride at Epcot that I have down here is Soarin'. Soarin' is another one that's fucking amazing. I I absolutely love that one. It's another. It's like another motion activated ride where you're sitting in seats and then it just lifts you like thirty feet into the goddamn air as you're as you're watching like this giant projection screen and you're supposed to be like flying over different places and uh, um around earth it's it's beautifully done the way the way the imagineers built it and set it up i don't know i don't know who did all the filming and stuff for the footage that's part of the of the screen in soren but that's another one that i absolutely love 
And I kept forgetting about it in January. I did end up going back on it one time with with you and your cousin and your sister in in January. But that was one that I kept forgetting about when we were there in January that I really enjoyed and wish I had have gone on a couple more times. But Soren is is definitely like if I was given if if I was given these ratings, I would say I'd probably put Soren and Mission Space. Well, Mission Space for me, it's a nine probably for probably a lot of people wouldn't agree with me on that one for the green side but for me i enjoyed it it's a nine soren is another one that i would give a nine test track i would probably again probably six and a half just because you know it's i i didn't get the full experience having going going through just the single rider line so i would probably give i would probably give that six and a half guardians uh, you know what I'll give that a six as well. I'll give that a six. Uh, it's just because it seems like it's a really good ride for, for people that enjoy those types of rides. And they did a phenomenal job with like the music and everything. It just wasn't a ride for me, especially that early in the morning after just eating breakfast. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a six because I do think they did a good job. It's just not, one for me although i would probably try to ride it one more time and see if i could handle it if i could do it sometime where i haven't just eaten beforehand <laughs> that's fair it's funny because i was gonna ask you i was gonna be like i was gonna ask you, be like we need to get you your, your ratings on these. <laughs> yes i i was sort of talking about soaring and i'm like oh you know what i should do i should be given ratings for these rides <laughs> i want to start i'm gonna i want to start writing these down actually hang on okay, so I'll listen back when when it releases so that I can get them down because I want to compare when next time we go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, next ride that I have here, Spaceship Earth. Spaceship Earth is one that I I don't remember. Oh, that's the people mover, right? The yeah, the one inside the the dome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I fucking love that ride. It's it's like one of the oldest rides at Epcot, and yep. it's kind of cheesy. But I fucking love it. It's 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 a great ride because it's fast. Even if there's a long lineup, it just moves so quickly. So you can get through the line in like 10, 15 minutes tops. And it's just one of those rides that you can go in, go on, enjoy, get out of the Florida heat for a while, be in a nice air conditioned building where you sit down and you're you're being carried. You're being, you know driven basically on this track and getting a getting a lesson in in human history so it's 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 a nice fun little ride i absolutely love it i'll I'll give it an eight it's obviously it's not the it's not the greatest ride it's doesn't have a lot of thrills there's not a lot to do on it but and you know it is i hate to say it but it is kind of outdated Yep. And but it is it's still it's still a fun classic Disney ride. And, and again, like I said, the, you don't have to wait too long. And it, it's definitely something that gets you through those Florida days, especially if you're there in the middle of the day when it's super hot and you don't want to wait too long. Just go on this one and then you're in air condition for about five, 10, 15 minutes and uh, you're good to go. I'm pretty sure that ride's about 20 minutes long. I think it's 20 to 22 minutes. Is it okay? I think so. Okay, I could be wrong, but I'm. I l- what I have to say about that right is I I enjoy it. When I was like when I was younger, I did not enjoy it at all. I thought it was <laughs> trash. But but then again, when I was like this is when I'm like a teenager, and when I'm a teen, I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I fucking love thrill rides still. But when I was as a teenager, all I wanted was thrill rides, right? Yeah. So now with with Spaceship Earth, to me that is my that is the ride I will go to, like you said, when it's when it's hot. Yeah. And I need a break because like we you do tons of walking. You're doing tens of thousands of steps a day. That is my go to break ride for yeah. Epcot. I, ha- I think I have a go to break ride at almost every park. And that is my go to break ride there because I know that I'm going to be sitting down for at least 15 to 20 minutes <laughs> and just relax it. I'm not going to lie. I take naps in that ride, too. <laughs> Because it's it's nice and well, AC'd, when, when and we, I will just take a nap. 
when when we went back in January, I I, I did that ride. I, I did that ride a couple of times when we went back in January. But yeah, there was definitely a time that I just went in there one time in January and just felt uh, started to doze off and <laughs> take a little nap. Yeah, no, that's exactly what you do. So it's 15 minutes. Yeah. The 15 minute ride. As as you said, it's a little bit outdated. They did say, I think it was two years ago, they said they were going to shut it down and refurbish it and do a new store. Not a new, not a brand new story, but they're going to do some updating for things and have a different almost, narrator. It was three years ago. Cause I remember, I remember you talking about that on the, on the podcast. I think when, when we had Bob on uh, yeah. in one of our very first early episodes in 2020. So yeah, it's, it's been like three years since, since they had talked about that. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I don't know if they're still going to do it. It doesn't seem like there are. Yeah, but it's it's definitely one that probably could be going down. Okay, so sorry, it was supposed to be it was supposed to be closed. Uh, it was supposed to be closing in uh, May on May twenty sixth, twenty twenty, but you know, pandemic. COVID, yep. Yeah, COVID COVID didn't uh, delay that indefinite. So who knows if they will do it? I mean, again, I think they should at some point. Mm-hmm. But uh, I again, I do like that ride. I just hope that if they do redo it, I hope they don't change the length. Because it's it's the perfect length just yeah. to just to get out of the sun for for 15, 20 minutes and, and just chill and relax. So if they do update the ride, I hope they keep it roughly the, the same uh, same length for, for the time of ride. Agreed. All right. That brings me to an, an, another ride, there, another semi slow moving ride. And that is Nemo and Friends. The sea <laughs> with Nemo and Friends. <laughs> you know, it's funny, like. I went on that again in January, and I still really don't remember too too much about it. <laughs> um, like every, I I took video footage of it every when I went on it back in January, and every once in a while I have to check the video footage to remind myself what the Nemo ride was. It's 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 an okay ride. It's another one like you said. It's slow moving, so it gives you a chance to get out of the heat and, and just uh, and just cool off for a bit, but. I don't know. For me, for me, it's just not one that's very memorable. It, it's it's very basic. Obviously, it's got the Nemo theme where you, where you're trying to help, uh, Mer- or you're watching Merlin try to try to find Nemo. But yeah, it's just not one that I fi- find very memorable. But what I really enjoyed is after the ride, it takes you into an aquarium yep. where you can actually see like different fish and. They had a couple of sharks as well in the aquarium. I think they had manatees in a section of the aquarium too, if I remember correctly. I'm pretty but, sure they do, yeah. But that aquarium is so amazing. So, I mean, the ride itself, I would probably give a four, but the overall experience with the aquarium, I would say bumps it up to probably, I, I'll give it a six and a half for, for the overall, but the ride itself, I'll give a four. That's fair. So I mean that that ride is it's a slow moving ride. It's it's the if you've watched the movie, it's it's the movie just condensed yeah. into five minutes. Yes. Yeah. That that's what it is. It's literally just following the whole story of Nemo getting lost and you know, uh Marlon and Dory going to find him and, and that's that's all it is. And you're in a clam shell, I think. Yes. Yeah. Right? It's uh it's, it's the exactly. same as Little Mermaid. We'll get to that when we get to that other park. But uh, yeah, it's the that's all it is, and like you said, it goes into like an aquarium. You get to see all the animals, but then there's also which kind of once you go through that, it leads us into the next thing that's there, and it's not exactly a ride. It's kind of like a show. It's funny. I remember Dave laughing his ass off, and it's called Turtle Talk with Crush. <laughs> I am going to give this an eight and a half, and. The- <laughs> The only reason I'm going to give it an eight and a half is obviously because it's a live show. There's going to be a different experience for every crowd that's in there that day. Right. So not everybody is going to have the same experience when we went. It was absolutely amazing. And whoever voices crush does a really good job with crowd interactions. But again, again, the crowd is is part of the show. Right. So. Sometimes you'll have more lively crowds than than others. Like obviously, 
I'm sure most people that are fans of Disney have seen Turtle Talk with Crush clips on TikTok. And there are some where you can see like Crush is trying his hardest to get something out of the audience and the audience just isn't giving him anything. And then other times the audience is super interactive, super, super going with it. So, I mean, again, this could this could very well be a 10 out of 10 based on your experience and the crowd that you get when you watch it. But because it is one of those things where it's not consistent, it is going to change based from show to show. That's why I'm going to sink it down to an eight and a half. So I'm not overhyping experience for people just in be, just in case they go and, and they don't have a good experience based on a based on a weaker crowd reaction. But that that is just such a fantastic show. And like I said, the the dude that does crush is great. It, it, he has to be he has to do stand up comedy in, in his spare time because the crowd work is just absolutely phenomenal. I, I loved it. It's it's a great show. I wish I had have gone to see it again when when we went in January. I didn't, but I, I'm happy. I'm happy I saw it when when we went in September. Definitely would recommend. Yeah. What what's what's cool about that? And you, you know, you talk about how like the guys got to be very like comedic and stuff, but like the animation, they're they're because they will again they play off the crowd and. Yes. The guy, whoever's doing the animation, right, will move Crush out of the way if need be. Like, there was one video on YouTube that I've seen where the guy's like, the guy asks Crush, what do you like to eat? And he, and, and he says this, like, you know, the algae or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Crush. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. And then Crush will ask him, what do you like to eat? And the, the guy goes, I like a good turtle soup. <laughs> yeah. And, cr- and, and goes and hides. Yeah. Yeah. Crush goes and hides. And like the animators or whoever is running that in the back, just like getting being able to do that, like on the fly is just phenomenal. You know? Yeah. Again, and, and it, 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 it's a team, right? Yeah. Well, and that's that's again, it goes back to the Imagineers. It's something that you don't think of in the moment when you're experiencing it, experiencing it. But. When, when you get out of there and you really have the time to, to think about it, if you take the time to think about it, like the Imagineers did such a good job doing that to be able to have the program set up so Crush can just move away in an instant if need be or just have have it animated, have animations ready to go to, to react to pretty much any situation. So, yeah, it's, it's a team effort from from the guy that does the the voice work to the imagineers that created the program for it just such an amazing job uh from disney for that show yeah that's a that's a good one i do like going to see it at least once when i'm there yeah next one is a nice relaxing little boat tour that we did called the grand fiesta tour featuring the I three love caballeros fiesta. i love you're on, you're on a little river you're you're going through because where where they have it, there's also like restaurants and stuff that people can go to eat and shops because it's in and, the Mexican pavilion. Yes. Yeah. And it it really feels like you're sort of on a river in real life watching watching people if as if you were on vacation taking a boat ride. I, I, I love it. it. Again, it's one of those ones where, you know, it's sort of out. I don't want to say outdated. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how popular the three caballeros are these days. I know. I, I know when I was a kid, they were big. I don't know how how much they play into Disney these days. But yeah, it's a, it's a fun one where you're trying to help Jose and I can't remember the other bird. Jose. Uh, Jose. There, Jose. A, Listen, hey, hey, hey. My this, father's name was Jose. Don't even fuck around this, with that it, shit. He's Brazilian, which means it's Portuguese, which means it's pronounced Jose. There's a whole thread that I went through about it on somebody's Disney Twitter the other day, and, and I meant to share it with you. I've got to find it so I can show it to you again. It's <laughs> Jose. When when they first created him, even when they first created him, it was pronounced as Jose. And then over the years, they, they've changed it to Jose. But as it was pointed out in the thread, because he's from Brazil and Brazil's language is Portuguese rather than Spanish, the correct pronunci- pronunciation is Jose over Jose. But yeah, that was a, that was a great thread. I have to find it again and show it to you because I think you'd really enjoy that. And uh, the other bird's name is Panchito. 
Yes. So you're helping you're helping them look for look for Donald Duck because uh, Donald ha- has just gone off to do his own thing and do his own adventure. But yeah, it's it's another one that's not the lineups t- usually don't tend to be very long. And it's another one where the ride is like maybe 10, 15 minutes, maybe a little less than that. But you just get to sit down and and uh, cool off and, and and enjoy what I think is a decent story. It's probably not for everybody. I enjoyed it. So, I mean, I if I'm giving it a rating, I'll probably I'll probably go with a seven and a half. But that's that's one I would definitely do every time I'm at I'm at Epcot. That's just such a fun ride. Yeah. When, what's cool about Epcot or what's cool about this ride is that it's kind of tucked away. It's it's in like I said, it's in the Mexico Pavilion, but yeah. within the Mexico, it's it's within the um the pyramid that's that they built there. Where there's a whole bunch of shops and uh, like you said, there's a restaurant, there's a tequila bar in there as well. And tucked away right in the back, there is the entrance to that ride. And it's it's never longer than 10 minutes. Yeah. Never longer than 10 minutes yeah. to get on the ride. And most of that is just waiting for people to get off and on the boat. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I love that ride. I love that. It's something I go on every time. And, I mean, to be fair, I go on every ride every time. But <laughs> yeah, it's something I make sure I make a point to go on that ride. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 a fun ride. I I, I definitely I, I I love that ride. It's so good. And uh, with that being said, their next ride is what this ride was a very surprising ride to me. The very first time I went on it, I could not believe how great it was. The very first time that I did go on it, this is Frozen. I love Frozen. It. You know, the first time I went on it, it seemed longer than what it what it really was. Because I, when I went back on it in January, I was excited because I thought it was in my mind. I remembered it being a long ride, but yeah, it's it. The ride itself is only like three to five minutes. It's really not that long. Uh, I think it's. I think it might even be just around the three minute mark. So it's not actually a very long ride. But in my mind, I remembered it as a wrong long ride, especially my first time, because I didn't know what to expect. And they just they did such a phenomenal job with it. I absolutely love it. Obviously, because it's frozen and frozen is still really popular with yep. kids, especially young, young girls. It's a ride that's like like Ratatouille. It's a long wait time. It is. Yeah, it's all it is always a long wait time. Yeah. So I would I would recommend going there either first thing in the morning or late in the evening when the crowds are starting to dissipate to do fireworks and stuff, because that's probably when you're going to be at the shortest wait times. Other than that, if you're going any other time throughout the day, I would probably recommend getting a lightning lane for, for this ride if you're able to. But yeah, it is especially if you have young kids, they're they're gonna they're gonna love this ride. I absolutely loved it. They did a great great job. Again, shout out to the Imagineers who are just phenomenal with what they with what they do. I I want to give this ride a ten, but I think it could have been a little bit longer. So I'm gonna knock it down to a nine. But overall, it's still a really great really great ride. I just wish that a, like I said, it was a little bit longer and B, I mean, there are so many other places throughout the Disney theme parks where there's like interactive stuff that you can do while you're waiting in the, in, in the line. And there's really nothing in frozen. You're just waiting in the line and, and moving through the line. There's nothing really interactive or anything really sort of engaging while you're in line. So I, I, I wish they had have done something to, to make it more interactive, especially with the wait times. But um, yes, uh, uh, so because because of the lack of interactiveness, plus the uh, plus the shortness of the ride, I, I'm going to give it a nine. But still, it's definitely one that I would recommend everybody to check out. So you talk about it being short or you wanted it to be longer. So, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you know this, that it was a it was actually a different ride before it was called Maelstrom. Yeah. And it just used this. It's the same track layout. Everything stayed the same. It's just a it was rethemed from a from whatever Maelstrom was to Frozen. Right. So they yes. didn't really change any of the track. We couldn't make it really long or anything. Mm-hmm. It just it's, it's the exact same stuff. Right. 
I remember when they switched it and I wasn't too happy because I liked Maelstrom. It was fun. It was great. But when I finally went on this one, that surprised the hell out of me because I was not a fan of Frozen. It's not even that I wasn't a fan of Frozen. I just I don't think I'd actually ever watched it. And then I went on this ride. I was like, holy shit, this ride is fucking fun. It's great. And up until last year, it was my favorite ride at Epcot until Guardians. <laughs> Once Guardians came in, I was like, okay, this is dope. But like Frozen is a fantastic ride. I always get a lightning lane for that one or, or make sure I get on it at least once because it's it's fantastic. Yeah, and I mean, you, you did bring up earlier the fact that, you know, Guardians was one of the newest rides at Epcot and it's been out for about a year. For those of you that are listening or, or watching this, we know that Tron is at Epcot, but now... Oh, it's not, no, it's not at Epcot, but Tron Tron is the newest, one of the newest rides at the Disney theme parks, but because uh, that's at Magic Kingdom, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. And I will have a report on that in a couple of weeks. But that hadn't opened yet, either time we were there in September or January. It was very, very close to being open when we were there in January, but we weren't there yet, so we will not be doing a report this time around on Tron because we didn't get a chance to experience it. And that brings us to our final ride. And I saved this one specifically last for you. Ten. Absolute ten. (laughs) (laughs) This is Figment, or this is Journey into Your Imagination starring Figment. Ten. Ten. Absolute ten. I, I... Figment, that, that's one I, I do uh, that I now do multiple times when we're at Epcot. It's one that I did like three times when, when we were back there in January. I, 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 love, I love Journey into Imagination. And I've seen like the Disney blogs on YouTube that say it's not the ride it used to be like back in the 80s. I can't speak to what it used to be. I can only speak to, to what I've experienced. I absolutely love that ride. Yeah, you can tell going through the ride, it's sort of cheesy and outdated and definitely sort of needs a, a modern upgrade. But, but who doesn't love cheesy? But uh, That's exactly it. But you, you have the great Eric Idle as, as the professor that, that Figment is antagonizing. You've got Figment, the, the imaginary dragon that's, you know, controlling the ride and, and taking things over. It, it's just, it's fun. It's another one that the... The Imagineers did a great job with because, you know, you've you've got different you've got like the smell factor. You, you've got the motion ride itself. You've got the different sounds, the music, the song that plays throughout the ride is so amazing. Again, pure cheese, but just pure amazing cheese. So, again, I cannot it's speak to, spark. I, I cannot speak to what. Figment used to be back in the 80s and 90s, but yeah, no, I I absolutely love Figment. From my understanding, there's supposed to be Figment meet and greets starting at Epcot later this year. I don't know if they've started yet, but man, I want to get back there so I can do a Figment meet and greet. Figment has definitely become the the mascot of Epcot for sure. 100%. Like, especially when we were over, he's on all the merchandise now. Yeah, well, I was just about to say, especially when we were there in January, because it was the 40th anniversary of Epcot when we were there in January, and Epcot and Figment was on so much of the 40th anniversary merch. So yeah, he's definitely become the the unofficial, or maybe at this point the official mascot of, of Epcot. I I love that ride, Journey into Imagination. I just absolutely fucking love it. I. I have to go on it every time now that that I go to Epcot. But yeah, that that one for me is just I, I was like a kid in a candy store. Just 10 out, 10 <laughs> out of 10. Love it. Love it. I don't care. I don't care how cheesy and outdated it is. It's it's phenomenal. It's it's absolutely fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I love that ride. Uh, Dave, give me one second. I'm just going to watch. This episode of the Ocho and Ortiz Disney podcast is not brought to you by manscaped but manscaped if you are out there and you are listening we would love to be sponsored by you try out their new their new trimmer the lawnmower 4.0 it's it you know 
it's the closest, smoothest shave that your balls are going to get. I shouldn't be saying this on a Disney podcast. I should not be telling people to fucking shave their balls on a Disney podcast. But Manscaped is like one of the biggest sponsors for like podcasts and YouTube channels. So I'm just I'm just trying to do my thing. I'm just trying to reach out to to Manscaped and be like, hey, Manscaped, Ocho and Ortiz Disney podcast. You know what I mean? Like, What, what did I just come back to? Oh, I, I'm telling people that we are not sponsored by Manscaped, but, you know, Manscaped should sponsor the Ocho and Ortiz Disney podcast. And hashtag, that, hashtag sponsor us. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag sponsor us Manscaped. And also that people should go out and buy Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 for the smoothest, closest shave your balls can get. Oh, um, yeah. And again, I shouldn't be talking about balls on on the Disney podcast, but I'm just trying to get us a sponsorship, man. I'm just trying to get Fair us. Fair enough. Okay, so did you want to talk a little bit about your your experience with the food at Epcot before we move on to a different park? Like, I mean, I absolutely loved Food and Wine Festival. It was amazing getting to yeah. try different foods from around the world, seeing what they had for foods for Canada. Finding out they had a filet mignon steak was, which was absolutely fucking phenomenal. I think yep. we had it like three or four times. While it's because it, it's 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 a wild uh, mushroom truffle butter filet piece of filet mignon. And here's the thing: is I don't, I I'm a, I'm a fat guy, okay. And but the thing with that is also I don't like vegetables, but the mushrooms on that thing are fucking to die for. Oh, they did they did they do such a good job of cooking that and preparing it. And it's just a stark contrast to the shit, absolute shit job they do of making poutine. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck that they put on the poutine for food and wine, because I went back to the Canadian pavilion in January and they just had like a standard regular poutine and it was fine. But whatever the fuck they did for it during food and wine, that shit was not poutine. The fries were still fucking half cold. The the gravy wasn't even that hot. I don't I don't even think that they used proper cheese curds. I don't know what the fuck it was. And then they put like I don't know cottage cheese on top. It was it was absolutely fucking disgusting. It, I I it was it it brought shame to not only their families but also to my family and the family of every Canadian. To, dishonor on uh, you. Dishonor on your cow. Yeah. Yeah, shame and dishonor on all of us because of how <laughs> awful that poutine was. It was just, I, if I if I grabbed a thesaurus right now and looked up all the different terms that that are different but also mean awful, there are still not enough terms in a thesaurus to describe how truly awful this poutine was. It was no, it if. No, no, absolutely not. It was, it, it was, I, I, I don't know how I didn't throw that shit up because it was, it was absolutely, it was disgusting. And I would not recommend my worst enemy eat that. It, it's just, <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. No. I mean, like I, we're, we're basically a year removed from when we went, but aside from the poutine in the state, does anything else, did anything else stick out to you from the food and wine festival? So just so everybody knows, Epcot itself ha- has, I think it's nine or 11 different countries represented throughout, you know, throughout the year all the time, right? They're just pavilions that are there. But during the Food and Wine Festival, what they do is they build another 50 plus like little stands that it's throughout World Showcase there. And they all represent a a different country. You know, they have Greece and uh, Mexico even has its own one and then Canada as well. But it's tons of different ones. Brazil is, is represented. There's tons of them, right? And you can just try different food and wine and beer from different countries and it's i love going it's my favorite time of the year to go is during food and wine festival i spent probably way too much money and uh, like i said at the beginning of of this episode i have a list of different things that i would like to try i always like to try something different but then i always make sure i go back for my staples like like we talked about the maple, um, not the maple, the mushroom filet mignon. That's one of my favorite things to get every year. And you know what? This is this. People might find this gross, but I always go to France as well because they have a escargot croissant, and it's just fucking delicious. Never thought I would ever eat escargot, but that there is actually very, very well done. And the Brazilian cheese balls are really good as well. 
And you know what's one thing that I do remember that we both tried and we both really liked was there was a mac and cheese spot. Yes. Do you remember that one? I do, yeah. That was and that was really good. Yeah. That was really good. They didn't have so what they one of the things they didn't have this uh, last year, and I don't know if they have it this year either, but a few years ago they always had a um lobster roll. That thing was to die for. Here's the thing. The one thing, the one negative thing about it is, is that the portions are small and the prices are a little bit high. Like that, that filet mignon, it's like ten dollars for a little for a little piece. It's probably like three bites, but it's fucking delicious. Yeah. So if you ever have a chance to go, go to go, and if you're going during and you find out food and wine is is happening, take some time, walk around the world showcase, and try some great food. I love it. Yeah. No food, food and food and wine is absolutely amazing. Like I said, I'm I'm highly sad and disappointed that i'm not going to be able to get there this year just because uh i've been unemployed for for the past eight months but yeah just because i've been unemployed for the for the past eight months i'm not going to be able to go this time around which bums me out because i i really enjoyed food and wine and i I love to get back there all right with that being said what do you think do you want to you want to move on to another park there dave yeah i think we can do another park Right. But I, I, I think this episode itself might be broken down into two episodes because well, it, 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 what's crazy is that I was going to ask you, do you want to just do this one like one park at a time? Do you want to do two, two and two? Well, I was thinking two and two. I think if we break this down into two and two. All right. Well, we'll do a two and two. So with that being said, do you, I, I'm going to journey on over over to Mag- uh, not magic. Fuck that. Animal Kingdom. Uh, yeah, because that's going to be a shorter one. Give a give a brief synopsis about Animal Kingdom. I'm actually going to go to the washroom and grab some more water. But yeah, if you want to if you want to gr- give a brief synopsis of Animal Kingdom and I'll be right back and we can talk about that. All right. So Animal Kingdom is it's actually the uh, fourth Disney theme park that opened up. Sorry, I'm just going to one sec. Dave's going to have to cut this out. Here we go. So yeah, uh, Animal Kingdom uh, is the fourth Disney theme park in Walt Disney World, and that one actually opened in 1998. It's basically a giant zoo. It's technically the biggest theme park at Walt Disney World because it's got the uh, biggest footprint, I guess you would say, because it has, you know, there's like a savanna, there's tons of animals, there's tons of different things you can get to do. Some very cool rides as well. And once Dave gets back, we will talk about those rides. But I, I I like Animal Kingdom, but it's always the one that I, if I need to skip one of the parks, it's going to be Animal Kingdom. But it's fun. I love that. I love that park. And uh, yeah, it's it's what, what they say is a zoo, zoo, zoological theme park. Jesus Christ, that was horrible. But yeah, it's a quick little thing there. Is, yeah, opened up in, uh, on April 22nd, 1998, 25 years ago. Doesn't usually have a nighttime show. They'd had a little bit of a nighttime show during the 50th anniversary, but they kind of got rid of that. I think the thing with Animal Kingdom is it's got it. So every park has a like an icon. So for Epcot, it was the giant. It's like a giant golf ball that holds Spaceship Earth, and Dis and Animal Kingdom is the giant tree. That's what. How tall is that tree? I don't remember. But that tree is very tall. And it's got it's got a, it's a it's a man made tree. It's got a whole bunch of carvings of different animals throughout it. It's even got a dragon in there. And the reason being, well, actually, I'll wait for Dave to come back and tell him about that. Oh, it's a, it's actually the largest theme park in the world, covering 580 acres. Jesus Christ, that's huge. But again, it's because it's got all the animals there. Hence, Animal Kingdom. Hello, buddy Dave. There we go. Yeah. So, um. I think Animal Kingdom is is a great way to finish this episode because it is going to be short because it is one of the least visited <laughs> Disney parks. And it, it, yeah. it's great. So, I mean, like I was saying it while you were gone, giving a little thing, it, it, it may be the least visited park. And I, you know what, to be honest, I said that as well, that if I have to skip one park, that that is the park that I will skip. Yes. But it's actually but one of the things I said about it is that it, it is actually the biggest theme park in the world. Right. Oh well, yeah. In term, in terms of like footprint? how big it actually is in in, yeah. in in footage and everything, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because it's uh five hundred eighty feet or five five hundred eighty five hundred eighty acres. Yes, 
because they do they do have like the live safari there right so yeah you, you yeah. got to have a space big enough for all for all the animals and stuff. So, yeah, it's definitely a big park. It's just not the most visited of the Disney theme parks. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I was saying before, and I wanted to wait for you to come back, is that we didn't really touch on this, but each theme park has, like, its icon. Well, while Epcot has the, the giant golf ball that, that holds the... God, how many Sorry? Spaceship Earth. Spaceship Earth, thank you. Animal Kingdom has the giant tree of life, which is a yeah. man-made tree that has over, I think it's, oh, oh, hang on. It has, uh, it's, the tree of life itself is 145 feet tall and 50 foot wide. It's got a shit ton of, like, different animals, and it even has a dragon in there as well, because at one point, there was supposed to be a whole dragon land. That never happened. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Animal yeah, Kingdom. Because- like the dragon land was supposed to be like a whole fantasy land, wasn't it? And then they decided to go with the dinosaur portion instead. Yeah, exactly. So this is definitely going to be shorter. <laughs> There's only one, two, four, six, eight rides, really. Eight rides slash attractions. And to be honest, I don't think we've ever, I know I've never been on one of them. I don't think you've been on this one either. There's a few of them you probably actually haven't been on, but let's just uh, let's just jump right into it. So, like I said before, there is the Tree of Life that also holds a show in there, and I think you you went on that show. You went in the show, Dave. It's called Tough to Be a Bug. Oh fuck that! <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hated that. Two out of ten. No, absolutely <laughs> the fuck not. No, hated that. So so fucking dumb. I hated that. No. No, absolutely not. Having having like the feeling of bugs crawling underneath your seat as you're sitting down trying to watch a fucking show. And like, heck, no, I mean, again, it's one of those things like Journey where the Imagineers did a great job with developing it, like with how it interacts with you based on smells. And like I said, the feeling of bugs crawling underneath you, uh, um, underneath your seats as you're sitting there. The Imagineers did a great job developing it. Having said that, it's not one that I personally enjoyed. On behalf of the engineers, I'll, I'll bump it up to a four. I will bump it up to a four based on the Imagineering, but the experience itself, too. No, would not would not do that again. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I know exactly what you're talking. It only happens one time at the end of the thing, at the end of the show. They ask us. They ask the humans to stay seated so the little critters can can leave first, and you feel them under your ass. Yes, yeah, and obviously they're not real bugs. It's just the way that the Imagineers de- design the uh, design the seats to to have some sort of motion, or not even motion, but just sort of some sort of sensor that makes it feel like that that there are bugs crawling underneath you. But yeah, no, I I can do without that. <laughs> I mean, it's got some really cool animatronics, right? Like, it's got Flick that comes down up from the from the top of the roof, and then it's got the the bad guy. Like, it's but it's like a full animatronic, like of that. What is he? A, a wasp? The the imag- no, grasshop- like the grasshopper. The Imagineering is phenomenal, and that's why the Imagineering bumped it up to a four from a two. But yeah, yeah no, the Imagineering was amazing. Just do not care for the show. Fair enough. Another. Oh, I mean, yeah, that's about it for that one. The next ride, I'm going to go with the Navi River Adventure. I don't think, did you ever go on We that didn't one? do that one, no. The Navi River, we didn't do either time. Uh, that's fine. It's it's not something that we have to do. I, to be honest, I think I've only done it twice in my entire life. It's um, something that I wouldn't mind trying because I've, 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 I've seen the blogs and stuff on it since since we've come back from the January trip. It's definitely something that... I wouldn't mind trying, but when we went in September, the Animal Kingdom was kind of later in the day, so we were just trying to get to as many a, a, as possible before the park. Because again, because the park is one of the least visited of the Disney World theme parks, it's also usually the the first one to close down for the day. Uh, it closed cl- usually closes around eight o'clock. Sometimes off season, it'll, uh, I've heard it closes around seven. So yeah, I think I think it was eight o'clock the night we went there when it closed. So we were just trying to get as much done as possible, and yeah, Na- Navi River just wasn't the top priority, so we just didn't get to do it. Yeah, the re- the reason what well, what one of the reasons that it closed early. I mean, it is the least visited park, but it's also because of the animals, right? 
well, they don't yeah. want to they don't want to spook the animals and keep them up late, which is one of the reasons why there isn't a fireworks show there is because they don't want to spook the animals, right? Yeah. So the next ride then there's there's another ride there that I've never been on, so I know you've never been been on it. Is the Kali River Rapids? That it's it's literally like any rapid ride you've ever been on. Yeah, it's probably the same. Like I there's nothing there. So you, yeah, you're but, wet. yeah, yeah. It would it would be like the it would be like the Popeye one that we did at uh, Universal. Yeah, exactly. Shit, shit, Dave. I'm looking through half of these. I'm like, fuck. We haven't even gone. We didn't go on these. I'm. This one's a show, but I don't think you did this either. Was the Festival of the Lion King? Nope. 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 Because <laughs> again, yeah. we were there so late in the day. Because yeah. I think by well, because you can't go to another park until like two o'clock in the afternoon, right? Yeah. They need to get rid of that. So by the time by by the time we got there, it was like maybe two thirty, probably closer to three o'clock, and. Yeah, so we only really had five hours to do stuff. So we didn't really do many of the other than the Bugs Life. We didn't really do like any of the shows or anything. Like we didn't even do the Tiki Room or or, or anything like that. So Tiki Rooms at Magic Kingdom. What do what do they have at Animal Kingdom then? A show, Vessel of the Lion King. Oh, that's it. I thought they had something else there too. They used to have a Nemo show, although they might have brought it back or 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 updated or something. But it's mostly just. Lion King and the Nemo show. I don't even know if the Nemo's back yet. Okay. But then other than that, the next thing is the safari. Let's talk about the safari, Dave. Because they have an actual safari ride. They do. We didn't get to do it in September. But I did do that one on my own in, in January. I really like the safari. I mean, it's basically like any sort of safari adventure. Like any sort of live safari yep. that you can go on. It, it, it's it's nice. It's a fun little ride. Probably about like half hour, 45 minutes. You get to see a bunch of different live animals. Some of them aren't always, obviously, because they are live animals. Some of them you don't always get to see because they will be hiding themselves. But yeah, yeah no, I, I, I enjoyed the safari ride. And it's definitely one that I'll talk more about when we discuss our trip in January. Because as I said, we, we did not get a chance to do it in September. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice, fun little ride. Yeah, the only thing I will say about it is, if you're gonna go on it, make sure to try to go on it like right in the morning because that's when the animals are the most active. Fair. Okay, so now we're gonna go to like I have. There's really only three left, so I'm gonna go to the one that you didn't go on because you won't go on it, and that's fire. Is the Expedition Everest roller coaster? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You went, you went on that, and I went to get, get an ice cream, which yeah. was absolutely delicious. Ten out of ten for the ice cream. <laughs> it was like it was like a it was like a Yeti themed ice cream. Yeah, so, so fucking good. I I think you ended. I think I ended up talking you into getting one after you got off the ride. That's realistic. There was no like talking into. It's just I'm fat. Okay, I'm gonna eat and eat whatever if you say is good. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> But uh, the Expedition Everest, I love that ride. It's a it's a roller coaster. It's a fast roller coaster. So you know, I advise Dave not to go on that one. Yeah. But what's cool about it is you're supposed to go on a train and then you go up. Um, I'll just talk about it quickly. You, you you go up. You're supposed to be going up the the Mount Everest, and then that you see the tracks are broken. You you go backwards for a second. And you see that it was the actual Yeti that broke the tracks, and then you know you, you go forward and you. You're going around the mountain and still, and as you're going through the mountain, you see a giant animatronic Yeti that it that has now been dubbed the Disco Yeti because what happened is he used to move, like his arm used to move, but then it broke mm-hmm. and he got stuck and it looks like he's doing like pointing like for disco. And it's just it's been stuck like that for years and they've never gone to fix it. Well, and, and from my understanding from watching the blogs, especially because of the way the strobe lights on, on the ride right it it makes it so the combination of the arm being broken and then the strobe light effects as you're going through the ride makes it seem like like a disco (laughs) yeah and it's just it's been broken forever yeah and i think it's never it's never gonna get fixed to to do uh, what's that one one of the one of the blogs that i i was watching said that one of the one of the Imagineers who who worked on the ride said, uh, in order to to fix that arm and make it move again, they would have to like 
shut down and reconstruct the whole ride over again. Basically, uh, yeah. So yeah, that that thing's never gonna get fixed. It, I mean, there there was a chance, but with Joe Rody leaving, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, Joe Rody's one of the the leading Imagineers on that, and he's just he's it's never gonna happen. Yeah, I think he was the one that uh, that they quoted in the in the blog that I was watching. I think he was the one that that was quoted uh, as saying that they would have to shut down the whole ride and, and basically recreate it from scratch to get it working. Yeah. So the next thing we'll do is uh, Dave's favorite ride. There definitely. We are going to talk about Avatar: Flight of Passage. Fucking zero. Do not go on this ride if you are a fat man. Because it is the most uncomfortable fucking ride. And, you know, you're supposed to be riding on a bike, but it feels like you have a dildo stuck up your fucking ass for like seven goddamn minutes. And it's just the most uncomfortable. Again, it's not it's not a ride that's built for bigger guys. And no, no that is a fucking zero. A huge weight. I mean, again, it's one of those things where when they when you're waiting in line the imagineers did a great job with with the displays and everything and and, and making making the lineup uh, the the wait line look cool but the actual ride itself is not worth the wait yeah no the straps were hard to get on because the straps are not sized for a big guy like me and then i did not enjoy the feeling of having a dildo stuck up my ass for 7 minutes <laughs> while i'm riding around on this fucking avatar going through space in, in a, from a movie that I can't even be bothered to actually fucking watch. It's been out for fucking, what, 14 years now, and I still haven't seen the original Avatar? No, abs- absolute fucking zero. Would not recommend. Hate this ride. I'm sure you've seen the original Avatar. I have not. It's called Pocahontas. I mean, I, I've seen Pocahontas. The, the It's the same fucking story, dude. That is the story. Avatar is the same story as Pocahontas. Excuse me, but James Cameron did not write Pocahontas. I know. And, and, and that's what I'm and, saying. He just fucking and also, stole it. also, also, Mel Gibson was not in Avatar. So do not try to tell me it's the same story, sir. <laughs> it's the same story. Fucking anyways. I the the one thing I will agree with you, it is definitely not worth the wait. I remember going on that the first time and I was very underwhelmed i had high hopes for it because it just it gets phenomenal like reviews all the time well, maybe I, not from bigger guys but just people love it people seem to love that ride. having a dildo up their ass for seven minutes yeah some people i do guess so that. people, people not, seem not to my love that job. ride and they just seem to they they will wait hours for that ride and i just i don't understand it i've gone on it a few times and i still don't understand like it's fun but it's not the greatest ride because you're supposed to be you're supposed to be connected and and riding up uh, on the back of a banshee. Yeah, yeah, but Sorry. and pe- people compare it to Soren, right? Where that makes you feel like you're you're flying and stuff like that. But I think it's a poor man Soren. I think Soren is way 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 better I than this even ride. Compare it to Soren, like I mean, graphically when you're looking at the screen, I guess, but overall. I'm, Soren is is like far and above, uh, far and above, like not even not even remotely close. Yeah, but, no, I yeah. agree. I agree. It just it, it's just weird. I don't. Everybody loves that ride. I don't understand. But, but here's the thing: is I also really don't like Avatar. If I want, like I said before, if I wanted to watch it, I'll watch Pocahontas. And it's just what one of the cool thing. The best thing about that is the actual land itself, and especially if you go at night, everything's lit up, and it looks like they have giant floating trees and shit like that it's that shit's really cool the it's uh, it's aesthetically pleasing but the ride itself is just trash well, i mean it's not trash it's just well yeah it's trash it's trash <laughs> so enough about that ride uh let's go to the final ride that we have dave you went on this multiple times last time even in january yeah uh we're gonna talk about dinosaur love it absolutely love that ride it's it was so amazing it is it is one that sort of, you know, again, is a fast moving one. There's a lot of jerky motion to it. So, again, if somebody is sensitive to, to motion rides, probably would not recommend this to them. But I, I, I handled it easier than, than I did Guardians of the Galaxy and also easier than I handled Test Track. I, I love Dinosaur. That was 
I wasn't planning on going to Animal Kingdom when we went back in January, but there were two things that that made me go to Animal Kingdom. One was the interactive 50th anniversary statues because I ended up buying a, a Magic Band Plus, and I wanted to do I wanted to do as many of the 50th anniversary interactive statues as possible. I got 49 out of 50 only because the Goofy and Pluto statue at Magic Kingdom was not working it was it was completely dead and defective by the time i went back in january but i got all i got 49 out of the other 50 statues so i did i did animal kingdom for the statues and dinosaur because i i really enjoyed that ride it 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 basically you're on a ride where you're being sent back in time to capture a dinosaur what's that an iguanodon yes an iguanodon dinosaur but the scientist sending you back is also sending you on a secret side mission which no, ends up the side mission oh that is the side mission what what was the main mission supposed to be the main mission is just to go back and and kind experience. of like experience experience it and just not go to you're supposed to go back further enough that you're not going to be impacted by the meteor the meteors that's coming down right yeah yeah so yeah so the main mission is you're supposed to just basically go back in time and see the dinosaurs and then the this sign this rogue scientist wants you to capture an iguanodon form and bring it back so he sets you back in time just before the the meteor collides with the earth which i don't know why you have to put it right back at that time point it's not like it's not like iguanodon suddenly appeared five minutes before the meteor <laughs> came crashing and killed all the dinosaurs like you could have you could have put us a little bit further back in time and still gotten the iguanodon safely so i don't know why you had to put us like five minutes before the meteor crash i i, I guess it wouldn't be, make for a ride otherwise but yeah so <laughs> obviously the meteor is coming down to hit earth so eventually your your mission is, to capture the iguanodon is is canceled and the scientist has to bring you back to Earth safely. In the meantime, obviously, you see a bunch of other dinosaurs. I think it's the the Cantosaurus that tries to attack you. I think that's the dinosaur. Oh, I don't. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not. It's not like a. It's not like a big name one, like a T Rex or something like that. I think it's a. I think it's a Cantosaur. Cantosaurus. I would have to look it, but it's a it's such a fun ride. It uh, again, I'm probably going to rank it as, as I, I'll I'll give it an eight and a half because it is one that is a little bit more intense and is not for everybody. Yeah. But it is it is still just such a such a fun ride. I absolutely love it. And I've heard I've heard on different Disney blogs that I've or D- Disney vlogs on YouTube that I've watched that Animal Kingdom might shut down dinosaur in the next couple of years i hope they don't because it is such a great ride but yeah i, I hope I, they don't as well i i absolutely loved it but I, yeah because they're they're saying that they might be getting rid of the disney the the dinosaur part of animal kingdom altogether in the next couple of years and i really just hope that's not the case so yeah me neither i love that ride it's one of my favorite rides yeah um i was very surprised when you liked it and were able to hand, handle it because it, it, it's a bit jerky Yes, it's a bit jerky. It's a bit fast at points, but uh, it's a fun ride. You like Indiana Jones, right? Yeah, I don't think we did the. I, I don't think I've no, ever... no. In, in in general, I'm asking you, you like Indiana Jones. I mean the original movies. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen fourth or fifth movie, but yeah, okay. the original movies. Okay, so how would you feel if I were to tell you that in Disneyland in California they have a Indiana Jones ride that is the exact same track layout, basically of dinosaur i mean i i have i've seen it in the in the disney vlogs that i watch and i definitely want to do that ride yeah it it, that it looks fucking awesome obviously instead of dinosaurs i think you're just trying to escape the giant ball or whatever it is right but uh, there's the giant ball and different things yeah yeah but yeah i i I would love i would love to get to disneyland in in california and do the and do the indiana jones one because in in disney world they have the indiana jones stunt show but they don't yep. have any rides for indiana jones yeah yeah but yeah uh, yeah that is that is animal kingdom i don't think we had any food there we did not know because most of the places were kind of closed by the time we got there yeah. 
I think the only thing we had was that that Yeti ice cream. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's Animal Kingdom. And that's that's part one. I know we were originally just going to do two episodes, one for our September trip and one for our, our January trip. But uh, we will do three episodes, <laughs> possibly, possibly four, <laughs> possibly four for for our trips to Disney. But uh, yeah, so on the next episode, we will cover our our time at Magic Kingdom and Hollywood, Hollywood Studios, Studios from from September but yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed this. I, I'm glad that Josh talked me into, in, into going to Disney with him. I'm glad I was finally able to go to Disney with him because for the longest time I didn't have a passport when he, when he went in the past. So yeah, I, I was glad to finally go and we will definitely get into more in, in, in part two. Yeah, it'll be great. I'm excited to do it. I love Disney. <laughs> I love going to the Disney parks. This is what I've been waiting to do, and I'm happy that we can finally do it. Yeah, same same here. So, guys, we we appreciate you listening, and we hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, because we haven't done an episode in almost two years, because, I mean, that episode in, in October of 2021, even though it released on Halloween, I think that's when we recorded early, because I was playing it back the other day, and we were talking about you planning your trip to Disney at that time and and the the 50th anniversary, the, the start of the 50th anniversary. So I think we record I think we actually recorded that one towards the end of September. So it's been about a, it's been almost two years since we've actually recorded an episode because we're recording this at the end of August of 2023. So, yeah, I don't remember the socials or anything, but like I said, I will find them. I will put them in the description box down below. Please be sure to give us a follow. Give us a like on social media. You can find this podcast on most major podcasts and platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and, of course, Podbean. I believe it's I believe it's Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. Dot podbean.com again I'd, i'll have to look it up but that'll be in the description below obviously if you're listening or watching this you found it but we would greatly appreciate it if you let other people know where to find the show because that's the best way to help this show grow for free so we would greatly appreciate that having said that whether you're listening to this in the morning the afternoon the evening whatever time of day it is where you are when you're watching or listening to this We thank you for listening or watching this. We appreciate you listening or watching this. And we will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye-bye. Peace.